if your students come in or if my students come in and they start asking me a bunch of questions what's my grade right now when's winter break is wednesday a half day did you see what i submitted last night at midnight did you see it can i please go to the bathroom please in these moments i focus on my mind's eye i take a deep breath and i say to myself i am not serious I'm gonna share everything that I do from how students enter to how they choose a hall pass. If you're curious about my cell phone routine, I kind of save that for the end because I have a free download if you're interested. Cell phone routine, stick to the end. Hi, Alexa Baroda. if you're new here, I teach high school English. Classroom management is 100% something that new teachers have been asking me a lot about, and it's the topic of most of the questions I get in the comments. I thought I would create a video for you just kind of showing you the things I do on the daily. If your routines are different than mine, don't feel like you need to change yours. This is what we do. We inspire each other, we collaborate, we take little things that we think might resonate with us and our students. I just can't stress this enough. Make sure that whatever your routines are, that your routines are clear and consistent. The moment you start changing up your routine, that is when all the questions happen. Before the school year starts, I literally visualize my students walking in, how small groups will work, what they will most likely need throughout class and how I want them to leave. And I literally make a list of practical routines that they can follow so that they don't need my help. And I never chill out with these routines, no matter how great the behavior and routines seem to be working in class, I never chill out. And here's why, are you a parent? Have you ever babysat? What happens when your own children fall out of a routine? Anything. you dare tell me you don't have a pencil or if you can sharpen it you better know our routine i'll start off by saying that before that bell even rings my door is open i allow students to come in sit down i don't talk to them about their work honestly i don't even want to talk about work myself that early in the morning we just hang out and do all the things i put music on i'll ask students to mix some oils up for me for the diffuser sometimes i'll ask students to take a marker and update our calendar this is where we talk about anything. If I hit a lot of traffic on my way to work or I'm having a rough morning, my students know. It's not always the students doing the talking in the morning. And I'm not even gonna lie, some students don't even really talk. They come here because it is quiet and they just acclimate and tune out. They listen to their music, they get their heads together. If they wanna be on their phone, fine. I like that they want to be here. When students are entering, I'm always at the door. I make this a point. It's so hard for us to talk to every single one of our students every day. This is that one time where I know I can make eye contact with every single student, say hello to them. And I also like giving my colleagues a little wave. Their routine is they come in, they know to grab their color-coded folder and their notebook, and they look at the board. The board will tell them if they need a laptop or if they need their textbook. If I know they're gonna be using the computers that day, I'll post a question on Google Classroom. If they don't need their computers, I'll post an assessment question and I want them to answer it in their journal. Sometimes I'll give them a journal prompt. If they need a pencil, they don't have to ask me. I literally have a little box. They can borrow a pencil and then put it back when they're done with it on their way out. When you were in school, do you remember how annoying it was to not have a pencil? Like it was actually stressful for me. So I try to take that stress away by just putting pencils out there. It tends to stay full because students leave pencils behind all the time. I just throw them in the box. So while they're doing their pre-class warm up and I'm taking attendance, some students tend to come in late. Here's what I do about that. There is a sign in book. They write their name, the date, the time. I love the lateness book because being late is quiet. If they have a pass, they'll leave it on my desk. If they're late every once in a while, it's at my discretion if I wanna say something to them or not. And if they're late repeatedly, that is when I will pull them aside at another time when it's not in front of the class. And then I'll ask them why they're late. Also great when you have to go back and adjust your attendance and you don't remember who was late. After their pre-class warm up, I always go over the agenda. This is so important. Tell them right from the beginning what they are doing that day. I do post our objective and our agenda on a board over here, but nobody looks at that. I really think that that's for me and for anyone who walks into the room and they wanna know what we're doing. It doesn't always look so fluffy. Sometimes it's literally just a slide with the agenda. I highly suggest having templates ready so you don't feel like you need to create new information and new slides every single day. Whatever that big question is we want them to answer before they walk out of our door, now's the time to ask it. Let them know that when they walk out, they should be able to answer that question. Today, that question is, what's your grade and how are you gonna bring it up? I love at this time to give students shout outs. Seriously, who does not like to be recognized? And if they know that you're taking the time to recognize them, they will try a little bit harder because they know you're watching and they know you care. I should create a whole vlog on seating because it's not a one size fits all. 
but I will say this. After I learn everybody's name, I start off letting them sit where they like, but they have to sit in that same seat every single day. I'd like to change desks. I like to change where students sit, not necessarily because of behavior, but because it up levels the energy in the room. And it's harder to get to know your classmates when you're constantly sitting next to the same people. I am waiting uh, to change their seats, waiting to get that eval. I do number my desks and I ask my students that when they take laptops, that the laptop number match the number of the desk that they're sitting at. There are lots of benefits to using the same computer on a daily basis and it holds them accountable, of course. It makes calling on students kind of easy and it makes grouping easy. You can do a lot more, a lot faster if the desks are numbered. I'll call on students at random. Doesn't look like I'm picking on them. Who's sitting at 17? You could literally ask for all of your odd numbers to go to one side of the room and even numbers to go on the other. I like the quickness. I've been doing this for too long. I know that when there's time between transitions, students just start doing other things or they get distracted. Transition should be quick. These numbers make it quick. When it's time to submit work, they can submit it in the right bin. It's also where I put their graded work. So when I see this is getting a little full or if a student is absent and wants something back, they know that they can find it here. There's another block, submit, graded. Here's another class. Ignore the math. I don't teach math. That's another teacher who comes in here when I'm on my prep. Again, everything's color coded. Let's see the work these guys are doing. Oh, that looks cool. We all tend to have our things, our quirks. And for me, I really enjoy fun passes. By the end of the semester, we will literally have an entire wall of potential hall passes they could use. Part of me doesn't like this because I don't want to incentivize going out into the hallway, but at the same time, they get a kick out of it. And when they get a kick out of it, I get a kick out of it. So just a little fun fact. Whenever I show this pass with the explosive diarrhea, teachers who only view me from social media will sometimes say that it's not right that I give students this pass. It's embarrassing for some of them. Please know that it is optional. And I do wanna say, I actually had this hidden. I don't bust out this type of stuff until much later after I built a bit of a relationship. I had a student find this in the back behind one of these filing cabinets and got so excited over it and he's the one who brought it out. I can't tell you how many students choose to take this. I also have I keep it simple passes like this as well. Not everybody wants to hold a sign. Now that is differentiation. I used to teach middle school and I had this awesome merit point incentive. I'll link a video. I talk about it in my middle school classroom management strategies video. It was the best system ever. I mean it, but I couldn't carry that along with me to the high school. Here's one thing that I could carry over and that is giving them some form of a ticket. I just call them raffle tickets. I'm sure I could come up with something more creative and I literally just give them out when students do things such as amazing grades, acts of kindness, going above and beyond, participating, being on time every day. It's so easy for me to make sure that every single student in here gets one of these because there's something great and there's something special about every single one of them. Sometimes I will literally just give them out in class. If they see me reaching into my pocket, if they see me, if they see me um, reaching into this little pouch that I wear around my neck, they know it's because I'm about to give out some raffle tickets and it kind of just perks them up a little bit. Not everybody in my room is intrinsically motivated. So sometimes what I'll do after I've graded a bunch of work or sometimes I'll just sit there and I'll think about, okay, who is in my room who I feel like I didn't really get to talk to or I've barely spoken to all week? And I'll literally think about this. I'll just go through my roster real quick and I will make sure that I write them a ticket so that at some point they realize like, oh, she does notice me. This works, like, I love this. I would love to know what your incentive programs are. Some teachers add minutes and they add up the minutes and they do some free Friday thing. I think that sounds great. I don't personally do that. Really, the only incentive program that I have are these little raffle tickets. They really do work. Students will take the raffle ticket, they'll put it in their class bucket, and every single Friday, I will pull two or three names out of their bucket and they can choose whatever they want from what I have at that time. It's usually uh, candy, snacks, sometimes I'll throw fruit in there. For students who don't want food, I'll have neon pencils in there, homework passes. It's fun, and I'll tell you what, students never ever let me forget 
about the Friday raffle. I always take the last 10 to 15 minutes of class, depending on what we're doing that day. And that's where I do my comprehension checks. And they are not always the same every single day. Wouldn't it be nice if we could do the same thing every day? It sounds practical, it sounds smart, but that doesn't work for me. Sometimes I need to do it in the form of a game. Sometimes I need them to write something down. We have English language learners in here, so things don't always look the same for them, but I do make sure that I have some type of comprehension check at the end of class. Lunchtime, my room's open. I have about eight students, sometimes 10, um, who come in here and they eat their lunch. Some of them kind of keep to themselves. Others, like, we do things, we talk, they help me, they play with the board, they play music. I don't ever get my room to myself, ever. Block my, the last block of the day when I'm on my prep period, somebody is in here teaching and I have to leave, but I still continue to let my students in here because I'm telling you, the pros outweigh the cons. I gotta tell you something, these fools are funny. They legitimately crack me up. I wish I could record them my cell phone routine. Now I have so much to say about cell phones. This is not one size fits all. My cell phone routine could literally vary from class to class depending on the dynamic. I promise you I'm going to create a vlog completely based on what I do about cell phones but for now here is what I'm doing on a daily basis that's working. I keep a sign on my board if they are allowed to use their phones or their ear pods for academic purposes they can see that. If the sign is flipped the other way I should not see anything in your ears. I should not see a single cell phone on your desk. It should be completely put away. And I don't have to say anything, just... And they'll go, oh, okay. That's it, that's what I do. Are there times when I have to intervene? Yeah, but for the most part, this works. I just made this on Canva. If you would like this, you can upload it for free on my Teachers Pay Teachers. Check out the description box, click the link, take it. Put it on red paper. There's something about the red paper. Well, our custodial staff will be in my room any second, so I feel like I need to wrap this up. I can literally hear her coming. I wasn't kidding, she literally came and I literally left. I didn't quite get through all the routines that I wanted to, but that's okay, I will just save it for another vlog. I hope you find what I was able to share with you helpful. If you don't know where to start or if you feel like your classroom management routines just aren't going how you'd like them to feel the vibe notice i get louder in my car i don't want to be this crazy teacher talking all loud in her classroom pretty sure i'm the crazy teacher anyway think about their needs what is it that they really need what is it that they need to do every single day and what is your routine for that if classroom management kind of overwhelms you it's very all-encompassing there's so much to it just ask yourself this question right now what is bugging you about class what is it on a daily basis that you just wish could run smoother whatever your answer is focus on that today if you have a student or a couple students who just consistently never do their pre-class bell ringer warm-up whatever you call it we all have one don't we did i say one that's a lie they always have a friend please tell me that you are not blaming yourself now, if it's the whole class, maybe there's a problem. But if it's just one or two or three, sometimes that, that is their makeup and that is a conversation for alternative solutions to what they could be doing. That is the magic question, right? Please comment what you do to manage behavior in high school. Please share.